<clears throat> so the original guy who did the flight floating magnets was this guy named William Gilbert, and he did it in 1590. He took boats. He was one of the fathers of magnetism. He put these little wooden boats, and he put lodestones, which are little magnetically charged stones that up would point towards the that would always point north when people were sailing. And he did the experiment with little boats and floating lodestones in these little dishes. So today we're going to do the experiment using neodymium magnets like we did. So the second guy who did the experiment was this guy named Alfred Mayer. He was an American physicist. And he found all these patterns when he, when he did the experiment. He used up to 20 magnets. So we're going to put the little negative magnets in the water, which are like the electrons. These are the electrons. And we're going to take the positive magnet. It's like the nucleus. And that's going to show what atoms, how atoms form. From these experiments, J.J. Thompson took these models and he figured out the atoms look like this. They have this positive charge in the middle and they're surrounded by negative electrons. Humans are made of atoms. And this is an example of human, you can think of a human as like a molecule. Like that's you right there and you're made of 26 kinds of atoms. Now this is another molecule, it's a bending molecule. It's like a little, kind of a human but that bends, that has like, it's like a little baby. Like when the baby bends its leg. So when light, which is the electromagnetic force, shines onto these bonds right here, the 12, 11 and 12 carbon bond, the molecule has a reacts and moves and straightens. So this is a primitive type of molecular movement. Now when you get to bigger molecules, some molecules start, will start walking. Like this is one that's inside your body, it's called myosin. And it walks along actin fibers and carries cargo. Kind of like a worker at a factory carrying things. So this is a molecule that walks and it carries things. So this is almost like a little primitive type of intelligence. And so here's human, is a bigger version of the molecule. So now we're going to do the magnetic experiment. So when you hold the positive charge, see the magnet right there that I'm holding? Take a look at here. So this is a two inch by one fourth inch neodymium magnet. And a magnet means that the, the electrons are all aligned in a certain position. And when you have an electron lying in a certain position, they all point in a certain direction and they make a magnetic field go around it. If I hold this positive end up right here, see these little lines coming out here? These are magnetic field lines and they come out of the magnet, out of the top and they go into the bottom. And we're going to use these field lines to make the magnet float in the water to make these different geometrical patterns. These are the three forces we learned about. Electromagnetic or inside are called photons, the particles that make up the force. And the force that makes up the strong nuclear force are called gluons. We learned about those. All right, so now we're going to do make some patterns. Is now we're going to take five. Really big. That's what shape we're going to make. Um, we are going to make a shape that has five, and that would be a. Um, What's the name of it? Pentagon. Okay, so there's a pentagon. It's almost there. Um. <laughs> we're going to go to six. Number six. And What's the name of that one? This one is a pentagon with one in the middle. See how the outside has five sides? Uh -huh. When Alfred Mayer did these experiments and expected, when he put seven magnets in, he expected this shape. So it's uh. So could I put it together? One should go to the middle. Uh, and tumble, what shape, tumble what shape to do the we left, have on the outside? Please. Number seven? Mm -hmm. So if you use seven floating magnets, yeah. what's the outside shape? How many sides does it have? Um, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's six dots on the outside, so it's making a hexagon. Mm -hmm. When you do eight, eight, you should get three different shapes. You can either get two, two will go to the middle, and you'll get three different possible shapes. See the different Three, possible four, shapes five, you can get? Six, seven. Seven. Um, no, it doesn't. It has how many dots? One, two, three, Double, three, wait for four, it to form. One, seven, eight, eight. So what's the outside shape? Um, nine um, dots. So it looks like it's got a 
No. Hexagon. See right here is the hexagon? Yep. This other one doesn't want to come in? No. So sometimes human relations, you can think of these as human relationships. So say you get, say you have seven friends. And this one, this will be like an outcast. You'll tell your friend you can't come into the group. And all this has to do with electromagnetic stability. This one. Like say this was your friend, you didn't want to hang out with you. You could reason you can't come in because the group's not stable anymore. You get it? See how there's five right here? Six right here and there's seven right there, but this one can't come in. That's why you get different stability patterns. Look, it's splitting. All right, so now we're going to, let's jump up to, uh, let's uh, jump up to 10. You should get a little triangle in the middle. You know, I should get a triangle to come in the middle. So the outside is what kind of shape? It has seven sides. What's that called? Um, it's a heptagon. An octagon. Well, the out, this one on the outside is a heptagon, and the one on the inside is a triangle. So which, now I got 12, 12 of these. What pattern is that for? Okay, so you see how there's the square in the middle? Yeah. And then the, there's a square in the middle, it's and then a there's. I mean a and then there's eight on the outside. So it's an octagon on the outside and a square in the middle. This is the octagon and this is square. Hey, the, the friends are in. So it's a double ringed uh, structure. <clears throat> so now we're going to use these to show the chemical bonds. So if I take two of these, I can form two different groups. And these are like two hydrogen. Oh, don't blow on them. Jacob, do not blow on them. Okay. Okay, so what shapes are these? It's a hexagon with a dot with one in the middle. Hmm. And this is like the, these are what the nit nitrogen atoms look like. They have, oh, you see how one, this one stole one from it? This is how uh, atoms bond to form molecules. So this is like, this one here is like. It's almost like a puppet. Seven, so an atom with Seven electrons around it is called nitrogen. When you have an atom that has a one a positive charge in the center surrounded by seven electrons, the type of atom it's called is nitrogen. So you go to the periodic table, see where it says seven there? And that's nitrogen. So if you take two here like this, we're going to make two different atoms. Okay, so how many, how many electrons does each one have? How many are there? Six here, right? What's the number above carbon? Well, six is above carbon, so these are like two carbon carbon atoms. Now, if you put them together, we can make a bond. Now, these, if I move them together each other, these electrons are going to start attracting to this one, and those electrons are going to start attracting to this one, and they'll form a bond. See how there's new patterns forming? Yeah. And these are, these two positive charges push against each other. Like I can. They're almost them. like friends. So this is what's called a molecule. Two atoms bonded together. You get it? So these, all these electrons, some of them attract to this one, and some of them attract to this one, but these two positive charges, they, they repel from each other. But the whole thing is a structure holds together. Like, so this is, cause this is kind of what humans are, you get it? How your humans are a structure of electrons and protons, and they're all, you're stuck together, but you're bigger, a large number of these. But you can pull them apart, and you can get the, but remember can how we talked? Can you make them dance? Remember how we did the, uh, and okay, endo, the cold dance. reactions? The oh. cold reactions, you have to put energy in to make the bond come apart. This is the hot one. Mm -hmm. So some reactions are hot, they just go on their own, but if things are stuck together, if you do a cold reaction, then they'll pull apart. And that's called, the, some reactions are endothermic, they get cold, and some are exothermic, they get hot. So it depends on which one. Like this one here is real strong, it holds, this one only holds five, and this one holds six. seven. Seven. What? There's six on the outside and seven, one in the middle, so you get seven. So this is a stronger bond right here, but this one is a little disorganized. This is a bigger, this is a bigger element. Okay, let's do up to six, 16. See where 16 is right here? We should try to find one ring plus another ring plus a dot in the middle. So now we're going to should be able to get three rings. Okay, it's almost, it's almost like a school of fish. 
Okay, you see the three rings? Mm -hmm. One outside ring is right there. And then there's a second ring, and then there's one in the middle. This one's in the middle. So that's 16. So Julius yeah, Meyer did this 100 years ago, and he got these same patterns. So we observe the same patterns now because the properties, yeah. this is called the, uh, this is the magnetic force, the one we're doing here, because these are just magnets attracting each other. And the gravitational force is what holds the magnets to the water. And the parts that hold the, remember what water is made of? O oxygen and hydrogen? Mm -hmm. The forces that hold the uh, hydrogen and oxygen together are electromagnetic force. So now we see three different forces here. So this one's magnetic. The ones that hold the, the tub to the ground is gravitational. And the ones that hold the, the atoms in the water together is electromagnetic. So now let's do uh, 20. Remember what rings we should get this? We should get this pattern. See where it says 20 right there? We should get three rings to form, plus a two in the middle. Um, uh, I forgot two. one more. Island. And this one. And those. It's hard to organize 20 magnets, guys. It's like a full. Okay, like you see sheep. how two are in the middle now? It's like sheep. Just put it closer. And also, if we want to make Maybe it stronger, can it we can do this. If you stack two of these on top of each other like this, I guess it makes something more powerful. So now it's more stronger in the middle. Let's see wow. if this works. Come on, awesome. little baby. Maybe you have awesome. to put it more close. It does work. Put it closer. Awesome. See, see how there's two in the middle, a ring and then another ring, just like in the picture? Oh, this one's in the middle. Yeah, those two are in the middle. There we go. Awesome. Now, you guys want to play with them? Now, don't yeah. move, the problem when you play with it, don't move it too close to the water. Because they'll they splash around. Stick. Yeah, so you play with one, you can play with one. Yeah. Don't go what do you out, think? too far. Oh, you see one too far. No, no, no. <laughs> Keep it higher up. Higher. Yeah. They're like fishies. <laughs> They're like fishies. <laughs>